Hi students, in this video we're covering section 3.3, graphing rational functions. All right, so our objectives are to use the key visual elements of a rational function to graph the rational function. So a review of the key elements, we have a vertical asymptote, and let's write down some stuff. Um, so at a vertical asymptote, f of x, the y value either approaches infinity or negative infinity at a vertical asymptote. So like, say we draw a graph, we'll draw our x, y axis, and say we have a vertical asymptote at whatever value this is. So when the graph approaches the asymptote, it either approaches infinity or it could approach negative infinity. One of those two things happens. That's going to be important for how we draw our graph. We have a hole in the graph. Remember, holes are able to be factored out. So say we have a rational function that's x plus 1 over x minus 2 over x minus 2 times x plus 3. We would have a hole at x equals 2 uh, is a hole. The y value of that hole is substitute 2 into the remaining uh, function. And so that would be a hole at 2. And then what's that? 2 plus 1 over 2 plus 3. So a hole at 2 and 3 fifths. Horizontal asymptote is either when you have the degree of the numerator. So, for instance, we have x squared plus 2x plus 1. We'll make it 3x squared uh, divided by 2x squared minus 4. So, when the, the degree of the numerator is the same as the degree of the denominator, the horizontal asymptote is the ratio of the leading coefficients, which in this case will be y equals 3 halves. Or you could have 3x plus 1 divided by x squared minus 1. And now the highest power is in the denominator. When that happens, the y-intercept, I mean, the horizontal asymptote is always y equals 0. A slant asymptote occurs when the degree of the numerator is exactly one larger than the degree of the denominator. If we change this rational function here to be 3x cubed plus 1 divided by x squared minus 1, this fun rational function now has a one slant asymptote because 3 is 1 greater than 2. And of course, the x and y intercepts are uh, the x intercepts are when the numerator of the rational function is equal to 0, and the y intercepts come from substituting 0 in for x and evaluating the rational function. All right, so when we are graphing a rational function, we have, uh, we're going to make a sign diagram that tells us if the graph is going to be above the x-axis or below the x-axis. On that sign diagram, we're going to put the asymptotes and the holes in the graph and we're also going to put the x and y intercept i mean the x intercepts the zeros and we're going to uh do the test values like we do for inequalities and so when we're actually graphing the function we want to first factor and reduce the function if possible we want to plot the x and y intercepts we want to draw the asymptotes and the holes and we're going to use that sign sign diagram and our knowledge of asymptotes to uh, draw our graph. Don't expect these to look great if you don't have a calculator. This is just a by hand thing. So let's see what happens. So our first example is g of x equal, I mean, f of x equals 3x divided by x squared minus 4. So we're going to make our sine diagram above example 1. So... On our sign diagram, we need to make put our x-intercepts. So you set the numerator equal to 0 for your x-intercept. So we get 3x equals 0. So obviously, x equals 0. So the, the x-intercept is 0, 0. The y-intercept is going to be f of 0, which is 3 times 0 over 0 squared minus 4 which is uh, still zero. So the y-intercept is also zero, zero. Sometimes that happens, that's fine. Our vertical asymptotes. 
So for the vertical asymptote, you set the denominator equal to zero. So x squared minus four equals zero. So we get x plus two times x minus two equals zero. And so x is going to be negative two and x is going to be two. So on our number line, we're going to put negative two. We're gonna put our x intercept, which is zero. We're going to put our other asymptote. So we're going to put vertical asymptote beneath these values and we don't have any holes. So and then we have a zero uh, at x equals zero actually. So now we want to choose a value on each interval. So from negative infinity to negative two, say we select x equals negative three. So if we select x equals negative three, we'll just put uh, x equals negative three right here as well. And why did I write it so small? <laughs> uh, we're gonna put x equals negative three. And so what happens? In the numerator, you would get a negative value. Uh, let's make this look uh, cleaner, excuse me. So let's, uh, yeah, let's make that look better. So, uh, I'm sorry, let's go back. So when x is negative three, in the numerator, you get a negative. In the denominator, that first factor is going to give you, so it's three x over, we're, we're doing three x divided by x plus two, x minus two. So when x is negative three, we have a negative divided by a negative, um, and multiply it by a negative. So three negatives are going to make a negative. Now we know this alternate signs, but we'll just check each value uh, to be safe. So then if X equals negative one, you get a negative divided by um, a positive times a negative, which is going to give you two negatives, which is going to be a positive. And then at X equals one, we have, so we did x equals negative one here. We're doing x equals one here. So at x equals one, we get a positive divided by a positive times a negative. So that's going to give you a negative. And just trust me when I tell you at x equals three, we get a positive. So now we know our the uh, where the graph should um, be above the x-axis, below the x-axis. So now we need to graph, uh, we need to find our horizontal asymptote. And since the degree of the denominator is more than the degree of the numerator, our horizontal asymptote is y equals zero. And again, that's because degree of the denominator is greater than the degree of the numerator. So we have our vertical asymptote, our horizontal asymptote, and what else do we need? We have our x-intercept, y-intercept, we have our point, we have uh, our points. So let's choose a, a couple points on, uh, one point on each interval so we can have something to draw our graph through. So on the interval negative infinity ne to negative two, let's use x equals negative four. And so then f of negative four is going to give us um, the point negative four. That's gonna be negative 12 divided by 16 minus four. So negative 12 divided by 12 is negative one. Then on the interval uh, negative two to zero, let's use x equals negative one. So then that's gonna be negative one F of negative one, which means that we get the point negative one. Uh, that's gonna be negative three divided by negative three. So one, then on the interval zero to two, let's use the point one. That's going to give us F of one. And F of one is three divided by negative three. So that's negative one. And then on the interval two to infinity, let's use four. So we're gonna have four and f of four, and that's going to give us the point one. Uh, 12 divided by 12 is one. All right, so we have our, we have four points, our x and y intercept, our asymptotes, and we know where the graph is positive or negative. So let's first plot all of our points. Let's use different colors for those points. Let's go with uh, blue. 
All right, so we have the point negative four, negative one. That is located right here. We have the point negative one, positive one, which is located right here. We have the point one, negative one, which is uh, when X is, yeah, one, negative one. And we have our X intercept and Y intercept, which is zero, zero. And we have the point uh, one, we can't have one, one and uh, one. <laughs> that should be a four. My apologies, that should be a four. So then we have the point four, one, so one, two, three, four, up, one. And so now we want to draw our X and Y intercept, I mean our um, vertical asymptotes. So when we draw our asymptotes, go back again. So we have an asymptote at X equals negative two. So we're just going to draw, we we'll to draw this uh, line that we never cross here. We have another one at uh, X equals positive two. Now ordinarily you draw a dotted line, but I wanna be able to see this whole thing. So we have that. And then we have our horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. So remember the horizontal asymptote, when x goes to negative infinity and positive infinity, it approaches that horizontal line. So we have those so far. So let's go back and make sure we can see that point. We'll put that there. And so now on the interval negative infinity to negative two, our graph is negative. So we know that what color can i draw this in that it'll be visible let's go with is green gonna be too much uh we'll find out so when we go when x goes to negative infinity the graph should approach y equals zero because that's our horizontal asymptote and again when we approach a vertical asymptote the y value is going to either go to infinity or negative infinity so on the interval negative infinity to negative two, our values are negative. So that means that we should approach the asymptote going towards negative infinity. Then from negative two to zero, when we approach the asymptote from the right, we should, uh, or greater than that, we should be going to positive infinity. So from negative two to zero, the graph is above the x-axis. So that's, we get that part of the graph from negative two to zero. From zero to two, the graph is negative. And when we approach the asymptote to the right, we should be below the x-axis. So that means that, oh, that means that um, we approach uh, going down to negative infinity. And then from uh, two to infinity, again, our graph is positive. So that means that we approach the asymptote going to positive infinity. We're going to go through the point four, one. And when we go, when X goes to infinity, the graph should approach the uh, Y, the line Y equals zero, because that is our horizontal asymptote. All right. So our graph looks something like that. You can go to desmos.com to verify that. All right, so that's how we graph it. We make a sine diagram. We find our X and Y intercepts, our vertical and horizontal asymptotes, and any points that could help out along the way. So our graph looks basically like that. The green part, the red lines are our asymptotes. All right, so for example, two, we have 2X squared minus 7X minus 4 divided by x squared plus 3x minus 4. So first we want to factor the numerator. So that's going to give us 2x. And for factoring, you're going to have to go review something else. Uh, I don't want to spend the time doing the factoring by grouping. Uh, we're going to get a negative 4, a positive 1. In the denominator, we're going to get x plus 4 and x minus one. So our zeros or x-intercepts, you know what, just call them x-intercepts. So we're being consistent. So our, nope. so our x-intercepts are 
The first one is going to be negative one half zero, and the other is four zero. Our vertical asymptotes are x equals negative four and x equals one. The horizontal asymptote. So in this case, the degree of the numerator is two, the degree of the denominator is two. So our horizontal asymptote is y equals two because it's the ratio of the leading coefficient. So actually it's y equals two divided by one because that's two x squared divided by one x squared. So we get two. And what else do we need? We have our x-intercept, vertical asymptote, y. Uh, oh, we need our y-intercept. So the y-intercept is zero f of zero. So that means that we get zero for our x, obviously. But then when we substitute in zero, we get zero squared minus seven times zero. And so we get negative four in the numerator, negative four in the denominator. So our y-intercept is zero, one. So now let's make our sine diagram above uh, example two. So on our sign diagram, we need to put our asymptote, our vertical asymptotes and our x-intercepts. So we have negative four, we have negative one half, we have positive one and we have positive four. So then on the interval negative infinity to negative four, Let's use negative five. And if we use negative five, uh, we're going to get, uh, we can make a, our, we can do our work over here. So if X equals negative five, what we get is a negative times a negative divided by a negative times a negative. So four negatives are going to give us a positive value. And uh, then if we have x, some value between negative four and negative one half, so let's say x equals negative one, then we would get a negative times a negative divided by a positive times a negative, which is going to be three negatives, which makes a negative. And then between negative one half and one, let's choose x equals zero. So x equals zero is the y-intercept, and our y-intercept was positive, so we're just going to put a positive. But for the sake of argument, it would be a positive times a negative divided by a positive times a negative, so it's still positive. And then from one to four, let's say x equals three, uh, we would get a, um, a positive value times a negative value divided by a positive value times a positive value. So three positives and a negative make a negative. And from four to infinity, uh, everything's going to be positive. So we're going to put a positive. So again, it alternates signs because none of our roots have even multiple roots or asymptotes have even multiplicity. All right. So now we know how our graph basically should look. Um, so let's plot our X and Y intercept. We have negative one half zero so negative one half is going to be right here the other intercept is four zero so one two three four that gives us that point the y-intercept is zero one so that's that point and what else our vertical asymptotes are negative one and I mean, negative four and one. So we're going to draw our vertical asymptote. So we get. Uh, so we get our vertical asymptotes at negative four. We get another vertical asymptote at X equals one. And let's see. And our y, I mean, our horizontal asymptote is at y equals 2. So we're going to draw 
Uh, I will horizontal asymptote here. And let's see what happens. So on the interval, negative infinity to negative four, we need some point. Uh, we need a point out beside, um, out past negative four. So let's see what F of negative five gives us. Um, so F of negative five, because we need some value that we can plot. So F of negative five, it should be um, positive. So F of negative five is going to be... Uh, let's see, it's going to be two times negative, two times 25 is 50, 50 minus 50 plus 35 is 85 minus. So we end up with 81 divided by 25 plus 15, my, 20, 25 minus 15 is 10, minus four is uh, six. So 81 divided by uh, six is about, what's that, 14? It's like 13 and a half, I think. So we're going to go with 13.5. So F of negative five is like up here somewhere. So uh, we're just going to have our graph look something like this. That point doesn't actually work on the graph. Well, not on the graph that we have. So... Um, because the graph needs to be positive, it, it also needs to be above our horizontal asymptote. So it's going to look something like this. And then on the interval, negative four to uh, negative one half, our graph is negative, which means that we approach our asymptote of negative four going to negative infinity. So we're going to draw down here. So we're going to go up. We'll just snake around to uh, get into x equals 1. So when we approach uh, 1 from negative 1 half to 1, the graph is positive. So we get something like this. And then from 1 to 4, the graph is negative and we don't have an asymptote so we're going to uh so because the graph is negative on the interval one to four that means on the right side our asymptote we should still be negative we're going to go through our wire intercept and when we approach from four to infinity the graph should be positive so we're going to approach that horizontal asymptote and draw our graph as such so again, it's not going to be perfect. Uh, we could choose more points on the interval, on each of these intervals that fit. But again, that's uh, tricky because knowing what values work uh, is just too much work. We have to go through and just substitute them all in. So your graph will look something like this, something like this. All right, next example. We have, it's already factored in the numerator. We have 2x plus 1 times x plus 1 squared divided by x squared plus 3x plus 2. Let's factor the denominator. So we get x 2x plus 1 times x plus 1. Uh, we'll just make that x plus 1 times x plus 1. And we are dividing by x plus 2 and x plus 1. So what happens is the plus 1 factors out, uh, cancels out. The x plus one fact uh, cancels out. So our vertical asymptote, they, uh, it occurs at um, x equals negative two. Uh, the x plus one cancels and it doesn't even make a hole because we still have another factor of x plus one. So if, the, like, if this x plus one you know what? Actually, let's take out the x plus 1 squared and just make it x plus 1. So we'll just completely lose an x plus 1. So what happens is that we get um, 
because now we're going to say because the x plus one completely factored out we have a whole at x equals negative one f of negative one that's the point so the point uh you just substitute negative one into the function. So f of negative one is two times negative one, which is negative two plus one is negative one. So negative one divided by one is going to give you negative one. So now we have a whole at negative one. Our x intercept is x equals um, negative one half. And so on our number line, we're going to put uh, our vertical asymptote, which is negative two. We're going to put our hole, which was at negative one. We're going to put our asymptote. I'm sorry, our x-intercept, which is at negative one half. And uh, that's it. All right. So again, remember, we took this from being x plus one squared to just x plus one. So I can actually show you what happens if we get a hole on the graph. So now uh, we, on our interval from negative infinity to negative two, we are dealing with just two X plus one divided by X plus two. And so if X is negative three, we're going to get a negative in the numerator divided by a negative in our denominator. So that's going to be a positive. Then we're going to alternate signs at negative two uh at negative one since that is our whole uh let's say we choose uh negative three fourths <laughs> that's going to be negative 1.75 plus one which would be a negative and then the denominator we would get a positive so it's going to alternate sign there and then something greater than negative one half like uh, zero, we're going to get two positive, we're going to get um, positive divided by a positive, so that should be a positive. Oh, hold on a moment. So at negative one, let's see, let's check again. So at negative three, we would get a negative divided by a negative, that's going to be a positive. Then if we use negative two and a half, negative 1.5, I'm sorry, for the interval negative 2 to negative 1. We get a negative divided by a positive. That's going to be a negative. And then if we use negative 0.75, that's going to be a negative divided by a positive, which is going to be a negative. My apologies. So at negative 1, we actually have a, uh, on the interval negative 1 to 2, we have a negative. All right. And so then from one half, negative one half to infinity, we have a positive. So we're going to draw our vertical asymptote. Uh, our vertical, go back. Our vertical asymptote is at x equals negative two. And because we factored this down to be 2x over 2x plus 1 over x plus 2 our horizontal asymptote is x equals y equals 2 my apologies y equals 2 so we get um a horizontal asymptote at y equals 2 our hole in our graph is at negative 1 negative one so we're going to put a hole right here and what else uh from negative two to negative one hat so we have a, a horizontal we have a x-intercept at uh negative one half and is that it we have our vertical asymptote our hole our x-intercept oh Forgot the y-intercept. The y-intercept is when we substitute in zero, we get one half. So we get zero, one half. So zero, one half is going to be right there. And that's it. So um, on the interval negative infinity to negative two, our graph is positive. 
So, and it approaches the um, horizontal asymptote when x goes to negative infinity. So, we're going to have a graph that looks something like this. We know that the graph should approach the asymptote from the left at infinity because from negative infinity to negative 2, the graph is positive. From negative 2 to negative 1, for actually from negative 2 to negative 1, half the graph is negative. So that means that we approach the other asymptote from negative infinity. We stop at the hole, go through our x-intercept, go through our y-intercept. And then as x gets closer and closer to infinity, um, or goes to infinity, our graph approaches the horizontal asymptote of y equals 2, and that's how our graph will look. Now, again, we modified that so that we could see what happened if we had a hole in the graph. Uh, we'll talk about the oblique asymptotes in class on Friday. All right, and so the last example is uh, something from your Delta math assignment. We have to plot a rational function. I'm actually going to open this in Chrome so you can see how this goes. So we need to find our vertical asymptotes, horizontal asymptotes, x-intercepts, y-intercepts, and any possible holes. So first, the vertical uh, asymptote. So let's factor this thing. So we can factor out a 3x. We can factor out a negative 3x. So negative 3x is going to be x minus 1 divided by uh let's see that's going to be 2x and x and factors that are going to give us a nine so we're going to say a seven here and a one here so both of them have to be negative to get a positive seven so all right so notice the x minus one cancels so we get um we got a whole at x equals one so whole when x equals 1. So that means we get 1 and f of 1. That's going to mean we get 1. Whoa, why'd you write it like that? So uh, we get 1. Um, if you substitute in 1 into that remaining function, you get negative 3 divided by negative 5. So that's 1 and three fifths i believe negative three divided by negative five yes so one and three fifths so that's our whole our only vertical asymptote is that x equals seven over two that's the same as 3.5 our x intercepts are when the function equals zero so our x intercept is when uh negative three x equals zero so that's going to mean that x equals zero which means the x-intercept is 0, 0. The y-intercept occurs when x is 0, so that's also um, 0, 0. So we have our vertical asymptote, horizontal asymptote. Uh, so our horizontal asymptote is um, the rate. So when we cancel out the thing that where we have a hole, we end up with negative 3x over 2x minus 7. Our horizontal asymptote is the ratio of these coefficients. So that is y equals negative 3 halves. So that's all the stuff we need to plot. We have our vertical asymptote, our horizontal asymptote, x-intercept, y-intercept, and our hole. So let's jump over to um, uh, Chrome to do that. So uh, here, so we had our... Uh, x-intercept was, all right, I'm going to be honest with you, I already forgot. <laughs> it was at 0, 0. So we're going to drag the point over to 0, 0. The y-intercept is also at 0, 0. So we're going to drag that to that spot. Uh, the hole in the graph was uh, 1 and 3 fifths. So we're going to go over to x equals 1. And three fifths is slightly greater than a half, so we're going to say right there we have a vertical asymptote at x equals 3.5. So, vertical asymptote is x equals 3.5. See if we can eyeball that. 
And then the horizontal asymptote was uh, y equals negative three halves. So y equals negative three halves or negative 1.5. So right there. So that should be enough to graph this. And now that we've plotted all five things, we want to select plot rational function and we get something like that. And so then we're going to uh, submit this answer and correct. So you can see we get all of these values that come up. But again, this is how you do this in Delta Math. All right. So that's going to conclude our video for graphing rational functions. It's not perfect. Uh, on the test, you won't have any super complicated examples, just enough that you can do this by hand. I hope this was helpful. See you.